SSRF is the biggest platform for scientific research and technology development in mainland China and has served more than 10,000 users since 2009. Its users have published more than 2,000 papers, including 43 papers in top journals such as Nature, Science and Cell. Since 2012, its protein crystallography beamline, BL17U, has become the most productive beamline to deposit PDB data in the world. In addition, catalysts helping to reduce PM2.5 emission have already been commercialised after being successfully investigated at this facility. The Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility is the first third generation light source in China. And I work with my colleague to construct and operate this advanced facility for scientists to do research. Uh, this uh, advanced light source make a, a big impact to the research of China, particularly in the structure of biology, material science, environmental science, and the energy science. And uh, there are still a lot of application in medical uh, application. The Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility is one of the most advanced medium energy light source in the world. Uh, it has uh, highest energy in the medium energy uh, facilities. And it, it provides high brightness and high flux to the scientists to do research. So world widely, it's a world-class facility. Uh, Shanghai Synchron Radiation Facility in its first phase constructed uh, seven beam lines with excellent output so far. Just recently, six new additional beam lines have been opened to users. 16 more state-of-the-art beam lines will be built within coming five to six years in Shanghai Synchron Radiation Facility. This is the so-called SSRF Phase Two beam line project. A couple more contracted beam lines are also scheduled. Uh, in BL13W, uh, the X-ray imaging is a powerful tool for material science. One of the advantages, we can observe the sample in situ or in operando during processing and operating. Another point is, using microtomography, we can observe the structure of the materials and then quantitatively measure the structures. Almost half of the beam time is assigned for material science in various areas, including alloy, polymer, biomaterials, and so on. For example, during the, the solidification processing, we can observe the dendrite growth in situ. This helps us better understand uh, the mechanism of the dendrite growth. BMLAN40W1 was designed for X-ray absorption fine structure technique. It uses regular as light source. The maximum photo flux can be 10 to the power of 13 per second. The energy, per, uh, the, the energy range of this beamline is from 4,000 electron watts to 15,000 electron watts, covering the most of elements. The ZAFS technique has wide applications in the fields of physics, chemistry, biology, environmental science. Especially, it's very important for catalysts. Many Chinese users gave excellent research in this field. The users came here and usually performed these two experiments under the high temperature and also in the presence of reaction gas. By these experiments, the users can understand what kind of microstructure and what kind of electronic structure are suitable for chemical reaction. It's very useful to design high efficiency and low cost catalyst. Micro, micro focus beam line can provide a very small beam size, uh, just uh, uh, several microns beam. That's very important for the metro uh, research because um, sometimes the sample is quite small, or the sample area is quite small. For example, though, for the silk, the fiber, and some posts in the, uh, in the sample. So we need a very small beam to study the materials. In BL08, you there are 
there are two end stages. One is soft X-ray spectral microscopy, and the other is uh, X-ray inference lithography. X-ray spectral microscopy functions at quantitative maps of chemical element distributions with high spatial resolution. The phytotoxicity mechanisms of uh, less number of no oxide nanoparticles have been studied at this, by this technique. And this is BL16, B1 staging, and the her name of this staging is Small Angle X-ray Scattering Beam Line. When we do experiment, we put a sample here, and scattering occurs. After a vacuum tube, the scattering information will be tested by the detector. Uh, we can get the inner structure of the polymer uh, by analyzing the scattering information. BL14B1, which is a general purpose actually diffraction beam line, it's mainly equipped with a Huber 5021 diffractometer, uh, allow multi-dimensional orientation of samples. It has equipped with three detectors. One is a point uh, detector for high resolution data collection. The second is a Mars CCD two-dimensional detector for fast diffraction patterns collection. The third one is a silicon strip Meissen Lily detector for high resolution as well as rapid data acquisition. Since SSRF has commissioned for six years, BL14B1 Beam 9 has gradually formed a series of user groups. Uh, the first group will be electrode materials for a battery application. The second group is powdery sample materials for hydrogen storage. The third group is organic semiconducting materials for photovoltaic cells. The fourth group is high temperature super alloy materials, engineering materials for turbine blade applications, and also include catalysts for environmental protections and polymer materials for tire applications. With this facility, the scientists can, can view the, the inner structure of the matter in the atomic and the molecular level. So it can be used in many, many research fields. Soon, SSRF will evolve into an advanced photon scientific research center and strive to make major achievements and dynamically support development and innovation breakthroughs in multidisciplinary science and technology. SSRF will continuously satisfy the relevant requirements of research and development globally. From next year, SSRF will be officially commissioned to international users. Welcome to SSRF.